In today's video, I want to talk about how to deal with difficult clients, something all professional photographers will encounter at one time or another. More specifically, I want to talk about problems that occur when working with inexperienced clients. In a perfect world, we would always find ourselves working for experienced clients with great creative teams, wonderful briefs, decent money and all the time in the world and you know great exposure for the work when the job's complete. In truth of course not many jobs are actually like this. Now the good thing about working with established or regular clients is that you develop familiar patterns. Pre and post production becomes very simple and to an extent the same thing goes for clients who are themselves very experienced at working with photography. They know what they want you're both speaking the same language, and even if you're not speaking the exact same language, you're probably still making the same sort of sounds. Now, working with people who have no experience of photography and imagery can be a very different proposition indeed. They don't know what they want, other than a vague idea of, I sort of want it to look like the matrix or something equally abstract. They can't communicate their ideas very clearly, um, and they'll have very, very little idea of the amount of work that can go into even deceptively simple looking imagery, whether that's photos or videos. They may also balk at the cost, and they may have no idea of what deliverables they want. I'm talking about final images, how many, what format, how long a video might need to be, all that sort of thing. Essentially, they won't be at all familiar with the entire process of creating imagery, whether that's stills or video. Now, this is also probably slightly worse these days, as everyone is now a photographer or videographer. The abundance of smartphones and social media means that everyone thinks they know how to do both of these skills really, really well. So, the focus of this video is dealing with difficult clients, but I ought to define the difference between working with an experienced client who knows what they want, knows what they're doing, and then something unexpected happening on the shoot, and or their demands changing afterwards, and a client who just doesn't know what they want in the first place. Now, with an experienced client, although both parties will have worked everything out clearly in advance, there are always unpredictable elements on shoots, and decent clients will understand this. Also, since you've been clear right from the outset about how much things will cost and how long they'll take, any changes and alterations should be paid for and clients will be expecting this. By comparison, an inexperienced client will simply see the whole package and they won't truly understand why extra changes or problems on the day will cost time and incur more costs. If you've outlined this clearly up front, you're on much more solid ground. I'm not saying you'll get paid extra, but at least if it ever comes to a dispute, you've got something to go back to. And if you've not clearly defined all the bits and pieces they'll get, the deliverables, and how much any changes might cost, and instead you're simply charging for the whole job, you can very easily find yourself spending days and even weeks working on a job to get it finished because you're professional and you like to deliver the finished thing and earning nothing extra. Now all of this of course stems from their lack of experience in working with imagery, whether it's stills or video. To clients like this and of course to most people, photos and videos are a bit like taking the car to the mechanic or going to the doctors. You don't really want to know too many details, you just want things fixed. And exactly how that happens isn't really too much of a concern. Now, as a consequence, clients like this often struggle to understand precisely how much time, effort and money can go into creating imagery that looks just like the stuff that they've gone and copied off the internet. To them, it's, it's a closed box. You're the expert, like the mechanic or the doctor, and you're expected to know the solutions to everything, as well as be concerned with all the details. Now, as far as clients are concerned, a little knowledge 
can be a very dangerous thing. In my experience, you're actually slightly safer with a completely ignorant client than one who's dabbled in imagery a little bit. If they really don't know what they're doing, it's much simpler if you understand this from the outset, and therefore you take a larger role than you usually would throughout the entire production cycle. You can guide someone like this very well and keep a much tighter control of the production. Far more trouble is someone who has dozens of ideas, keeps changing their mind, and is always trying to tell you how to do your job, despite not really knowing what they want and not communicating anything clearly. Like I say, a little bit of knowledge is much more dangerous than complete ignorance. So, onto the meat. How do you deal with these tricky clients? Well, it's two main things. Firstly, clear communication, and secondly, managing expectations. You'll get much better results from the shoot and save both parties a lot of headaches if you clearly define what the client wants and then what it will take to create that. Define what they mean when they chuck buzzwords around. If they say moody and gritty, get them to show you imagery that they think is moody and gritty, because there's a lot of room for interpretation. If they use terms like lifestyle imagery, get them to show you, because a term like that is an incredibly broad church, and there could be a vast gulf between what they mean and what you think. When it comes to managing their expectations, be really careful to define what they will get for the money and what will cost them extra. Email is better for this than a phone call, as you've got a written record to go back to if there's ever a dispute. If, during the shoot or during post-production, things start to escalate, you've got this to refer to, and you shouldn't, hopefully, be burdened with a massive amount of extra work to do on the project that's just going to come out of your pocket. So what questions should you be asking the client ahead of time, and what sort of thing should you be outlining to them? Well, in essence, these questions and the answers that stem from them are the nuts and bolts of what is called production. And that is, of course, the organisation that goes into any photo or video shoot. Now, I'm going to get round to doing a much deeper dive into production eventually on this vlog, promise. Uh, so this will only be an overview and a few things to think about, but here are some things to get you started and questions that should be prompting your pre-production and eventually your post-production on a job. Ask what they want from the project. How many images? How many finished or edited videos? What style do these need to be in? What will you be photographing? If it's people, are they professional models? Are they Joe Public? Are they friends of the client or the client themselves? If they're objects, buildings or places, are they ready to be photographed? Does the client have them if they're objects or do you need to go and get hold of them? If it's a building or a location, is there a best time to capture it? Are there supply issues that might affect the timing of the shoot if it's props or objects in some way? Are there any rights issues with including certain props or certain garments? Where are you shooting? How do you get there? Is there parking available if you're driving? What about different weather conditions and if the weather changes? What's the light like? How much space is there? Do you need to arrange things like permits or even take specific health and safety precautions? How do they want the finished work delivered? Are they expecting a full service, a retouching, a full editing workup, or do they just want fairly unfinished work? Now, the latter is pretty rare with inexperienced clients because they don't often have designers or art people backing them up to handle any of that side of things. They won't have people around who can do some retouching for them. They're more likely to want a finished, closed off thing and full production. Do you have the right or enough equipment to get the job done, or do you need to hire in additional kit? Does any of this kit have repercussions for the rest of the shoot that the client ought to be aware of? You know, as a rule, the more elaborate the production, the more inflexible it becomes. A huge, great set with heaps of lighting, lots of personnel, lots of kit can be exactly what you need. And as photographers, we love that sort of thing sometimes. But 
it can paint you into a corner if you need to think on your feet during the shoot and circumstances change. Because obviously the more you've got, the less flexible it is. If you're shooting video, things obviously get more complex. And you'll need to ask about audio because clients who've got very little experience with photos and videos never think about the audio side of things at all. You will need to think really thoroughly about coverage and how you're gonna get all the shots you need and draw up as detailed a storyboard and shot plan as you possibly can and work this through with the client and make, they un make sure they understand what it's gonna take to get everything on screen. Now, as I say, all those questions are really only scratching the surface of production. Each question leads to lots more questions in a sense. It's a huge topic in its own right, and each of these subject areas could very easily be expanded into its own video. Production happens on every shoot, even if it's as simple as thinking about what camera to take with you when you go out for a walk. So it's something you can't overlook. And the more complex a shoot, the more complex the production. When you're shooting for clients who are very unfamiliar with the entire process, you'll need to be even more organized than usual and your responsibilities will expand. Remember, clients like that are looking for a whole package. More experienced clients might take a role in production because they'll be used to it. Less experienced clients will expect you to do so much more. Now, if you think the client is gonna be a lot of trouble, don't be afraid to quit. Ideally, as early in the process as possible, so you don't wanna to have to start behaving unprofessionally two thirds of the way through and chucking your toys out of pram. Now, this is why clear communications upfront are so vital. If you start to get a sense right from the outset that the client is expecting the moon on the stick, but is only gonna pay pennies for it, walk away. Now, I appreciate this is not an easy thing for a freelancer to do, as all our instincts are biased towards taking work on whenever we can find it and getting the bills paid, but take it from someone who's been in this situation a number of times, save yourself the headache and quit while you're still able to. Let's say you have stuck with it and you're stuck with this bad client and this difficult job. If you do, and if you go down this route, my best advice would be to complete the job to the very best of your ability. Don't give in to the temptation to lose your rag Tell them to do one, because at the very least, you do need to get paid for this job, <laughs> even if it's not what you should have been paid because you end up doing loads extra. And once it's all over, and this is really crucial, find some way of logging and recording your experience. Doesn't matter how, digitally, pieces of paper, whatever you might like, and make this a lesson that you learn in the hope that you don't ever travel this way again. Now, for what it's worth, personally, I've probably had around half a dozen jobs in my 20 plus year career that have been black holes like this. So, do what I say, not what I do. And if it happens to you, only make the mistake once. One of my own worst mistakes of this nature was a shoot about five years ago for the launch of a gym chain. I was working directly for the client. There was no agency or design person between me and them, just the client. So exactly the sort of person I've just been describing where they don't have any real experience of dealing with imagery. They had lots of ideas, but they were personal trainers, not art directors or designers. So they weren't able to express them very well. I was very keen to do the job, but I made the crucial mistake of not getting all the specifics agreed with them in advance, particularly in regard to how much they were paying for and exactly what I'd be delivering. The job steadily ballooned and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And coupled with the fact that I was shooting stuff, particularly video in this instance, that was at the edge of my then technical skill set, I probably ended up putting in about three, three and a half weeks of work maybe for about a week's worth of fees. However, after I'd finished having a massive go at myself, I made sure to work through lots of these mistakes in my ever faithful logbook. And I can confidently say that I've only made the same mistake another three or four times since. So in a nutshell, communicate clearly throughout the whole process, although particularly up front, explaining what you're doing and how long it will take, along with how much it will cost, and make sure both parties understand what they're doing you know what you're delivering, and they know what they're paying for. Stick to this, and hopefully you won't spend as long as I have laboring for free 
on a job that's grown way beyond the original brief. Like I say though, do as I say, not necessarily as I do. Hope that's all helpful. Um, by all means, stick comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Like if you like what you're seeing. Subscribe, obviously, to so get notifications. And I'll try to stick another vlog up in a couple of weeks.